let us see the basic rules uh, basic design rules in the design of this uh, distribution fader the basic rules in the design of this distribution feeders are like uh, current during maximum load should not exceeds the ampacity of feeder the maximum voltage for uh, any customers should not be above over voltage limit the minimum voltage for any customers should not be below under voltage limit the first rule is mainly concern for uh, urban network with uh, high load density we will assume uh, that uh, it is not uh, a limitation and uh, in in our existing system the second rule is fulfilled uh, through setting the dead band of our uh, tap changes when uh, maximum 5% voltage boosting is used and uh, upper limit of the dead band is set to 4 to 5% below the over voltage limit the voltage above 100% or 110% uh, are unlikely to occur here the third rule is uh, one that set a limit for to the feeder length so when uh, adding generation to the feeder the minimum load may become negative so that uh, the choice of this uh, dead band is uh, no longer sufficient to prevent over voltage so this may set a limit to amount of uh, distributed generation that and that uh, is concerned with our hosting capacity which may also set an additional limit to the feeder length so this is in case uh, the design of uh, uh, distribution feeder becomes more complicated by considering all these rules moving on let us see the what are the terminology that are uh, involved in this uh, design of distribution feeder u minimum is the uh, minimum voltage uh, which is uh, experienced by our consumers at a low voltage level u max is the maximum voltage that is experienced by customers at a low voltage level u minimum comma limit is the uh, under voltage limit u maximum limit is the uh, over voltage limit u db comma maximum is the upper limit for a tap changes at a dead band u db comma minimum is the lower limit of a tap changes at a dead band u delta u max the maximum voltage drop due to consumption uh, which does not include any uh, change in the voltage during generation delta u minimum is the minimum voltage drop due to the consumption again uh, it does not include any change in the voltage due to the generation delta u boost it is the uh, rise in the voltage uh, due to boosting uh, here uh, consider an example of this distribution transform okay these are the some of the important terminologies uh, uh, that we are going to use in the design of our distribution feeders moving on uh, an individual uh, generator along a medium voltage feeder so so here uh, for an example consider a medium voltage feeder with a total resistance of r and a reactance x uh, and uh, the which is loaded with active power p and reactive power q okay it is assumed that uh, the load is uniformly distributed along the feeder and uh, the resistance and reactance uh, per unit length remains uh, same throughout the feeder okay a generator is producing an active power that is p gen at a unity power factor uh, which is connected to the feeder at a location lambda which is equals to lambda gen now one words we consider it as a lambda gen so we, uh, where lambda is equals to 0 which corresponds to beginning of the feeder and uh, lambda is equals to 1 uh, which corresponds to end of the feeder so whenever i say lambda is equals to 0 it shows that the feeder is at the beginning whenever uh, the lambda is indicated by 1 it is it shows that uh, the feeder is at the end okay now the voltage drop due to the load is given by delta u is equals to the above formula uh, delta u divided by u now uh, rp into xq divided by u uh, square now uh, to the product of uh, delta minus uh, half delta square the voltage rise uh, due to generator generator is uh, linear with the uh, distance along the feeder up to generator location and uh, constant behind the generator location delta u generally is defined as delta u is equals to lambda rpgn uh, to the u norm square lambda which is uh, which is less than or equal to lambda gen 
again lambda gen is equals to rp gen divided by u square where uh, lambda is greater than lambda gen this is the voltage profile along uh, a overhead line uh, which is of 110 kv feeder with the generation um, which is shown uh, in this figure consider this figure for a maximum and a minimum load okay the feeder length is uh, 18 km the load density is uh, 200 kW plus uh, 100 kW per uh, kilometers, kilometers during maximum load one fourth of that uh, during minimum load so therefore the feeder impedance is given by uh, uh, 0 0.309 plus 0 0.329 J per kilometer this is expressed in per unit the transformer dead band is set as uh, uh, 102 to 104% of its nominal voltage 2.5% and 5% uh, boost are used to prevent the voltage from uh, dropping below the under voltage limit of uh, 94% the under voltage limit is taken as uh, 94% which allows a few percent of additional voltage drop in our voltage network the dotted line indicates that uh, the under voltage limit and uh, the over voltage limit so we see from uh, these both figures that uh, lowest and highest voltage are reached somewhere along the middle of the feeder not at the end but it is uh, seen at the middle of the feeder however the ranges between the maximum uh, and the minimum voltage which will increase uh, continuously throughout this feeder voltage profile is uh, calculated again after adding uh, 1 megawatt generator at a 45 percent of feeder length so the maximum voltage uh, is now reached for minimum load and uh, minimum generation so the upper solid curve uh, is owing to a connection of generator the voltage whenever the voltage rises uh, above this over voltage limit for some customers <coughs> the graph you can see we are talking about the voltage profile uh, during a maximum load and uh, during minimum uh, load uh, for a medium voltage feeder without generation For uh, 500 k kilowatt uh, generations, the maximum voltage reached here is about 60% uh, of feeder length and uh, 1000 kilowatt generation maximum reached for 65% uh, uh, of feeder length. Only uh, conclusion can be drawn from this observation is that uh, uh, there are no simple rules to determine where uh, the maximum voltage will be reached. So depending upon the over voltage margin and uh, the location of this uh, boosting point and uh, the location of generator uh, this presents the complication in calculations of the hosting capacity. The two locations that often result in the highest uh, voltage are uh, uh, the generator location and uh, highest voltage um, which boost the closest to main bus. The hosting capacity has been calculated as a function of generator locations. Um, and um, both for generator and uh, generator location and uh, location with the highest uh, voltage before the connection so the lowest uh, two values were chosen so this were uh, verified during our stimulations that is uh, needed to resolve the hosting capacity for uh, different feeder length so this location of generator uh, you can see here <coughs> these are the hosting capacity for a uh, single uh, generator which is connected to the feeder and um, for as a function of the location of generation uh, where the over voltage limit is equals to 107 uh, and uh, for uh, different different lines representation it is 107% 108% 109% and 110% uh, the hosting capacity for a single generator as a function of feeder length 
here you can see the feeder length you know it is in terms of percentage and here it is in terms of kilometer one is for 18 kilometers 17 kilometers 16.5 and 16 kilometers so moving on a small increase in this uh, over voltage limits uh, which may uh, significantly increase our hosting capacity the impact of the feeder length on hosting capacity is rather complex uh, which is illustrated in our both the figures also it is shown that uh, the feeder length of 18, 17, 16.5 and 16 kilometers so for all other parameters uh, which has been kept same including uh, the load density also so here uh, the total feeder load decreases proportionally with uh, decreasing the feeder length however the voltage uh, limit was chosen here is of 108% uh, the feeder length of uh, 18, 17, 16.5 uh, the hosting capacity remains but uh, uh, same but uh, the small changes uh, uh, which are related to shift of location at a maximum voltage is reached here of uh, generators so the feeder length of uh, 16 kilometers uh, so there is no longer need of 5% voltage boosting or uh, 2.5 percent is sufficient uh, so here half of it is, is very sufficient uh, for feeder length of uh, uh, feeder length that is uh, which is equal to 16 kilometers the result uh, is reduced in uh, maximum voltage by 2.5 percent and uh, a large increase in the hosting capacity seen so consider uh, one more this is of uh, low voltage okay. <coughs> uh, moving on uh, the changing in the estimated uh, minimum load for uh, 20 to 30 percent of uh, maximum load doubles the hosting capacity so uh, this confirmed that uh, an important and accurate to it is important or accurate to estimate uh, uh, the minimum of voltage drop uh, uh, which is not up to a necessary uh, put on restriction to our distribution generation the measurement again provides a most accurate uh, basis for uh, calculations the wide scale uh, introduction of this uh, advanced metering will uh, make this possible in our coming future days the impact of uh, feeder cross section on hosting capacity um, with a larger cross section gives a larger hosting capacity for uh, a very small over voltage margin However, this can be mitigated uh, with the over voltage margin uh, because of this voltage drop uh, during both uh, high and uh, low loads become less. In fact, uh, the hosting capacity for these two uh, cross section is almost uh, same uh, towards the end of feeder uh, that has to uh, do some shift with the second boosting point so further towards the end of the feeder. The biggest increase in the hosting capacity is when uh, uh, using a 150 or 180 mm feeder uh, because uh, there is a no longer need of a second holding or second voltage uh, boosting capacity. So after the voltage drop during maximum load is reduced significantly so this can take over. So moving on. Okay let us continue with this uh, low voltage feeder. Calculating the voltage profile along this low voltage feeder uh, uh, proceeds in a similar way as that of uh, medium voltage feeder. Starting from uh, the voltage range, uh, it may be a maximum value or uh, minimum voltage magnitude. Uh, at the connection with this uh, medium voltage, the maximum and minimum voltage drops are calculated. You can see this uh, voltage profile along uh, low voltage feeder. So with vertical band on the uh, left hand side uh, the voltage range is in uh, the medium voltage network uh, on the primary side of the distribution transformer so this voltage range has been calculated before so the maximum voltage is reached for a minimum load in combination with the uh, uh, minimum uh, voltage minimum voltage network the minimum voltage is reached for a maximum load uh, in combination with the uh, uh, minimum voltage in the medium voltage network. To determine the hosting capacity of the voltage feeder, it is uh, maximum voltage that is of uh, interest. The diversity in uh, 
the low voltage network is uh, higher than the medium medium voltage network due to the uh, lower number of customers the difference between the maximum and minimum load uh, will therefore uh, uh, will be bigger for uh, calculation in low voltage network uh, it makes sense uh, to assume to be zero voltage drop at a minimum load the maximum voltage in uh, low voltage network uh, uh, is that in case which is equals to this uh, minimum voltage uh, in medium voltage network when more accurate uh, data are available for example automatic meter reading so it should be um, used here to calculations so for the calculations you can see the right hand side of our form uh, right hand side of the figure the formula has been given uh, p max is equals to uh, u square norm divided by r into delta max where uh, u norm is the uh, nominal voltage for uh, low voltage network r is the source resistance uh, at a point of common connection of the generator unit and uh, delta max is the over voltage uh, margin that is uh, difference between uh, over voltage limit and uh, maximum uh, voltage magnitude uh, before the connection of this generator so in this calculations uh, one may further neglect the resistance of the distribution transformer so um, it is that uh, cable or uh, line resistance that will dominate once the generator connection is uh, slightly away uh, which are connected away from our uh, transformers so this is about the uh, low voltage uh, feeder moving on we see series and uh, strength compensation so here uh, a strong disadvantage of uh, uh, tap changes is that uh, they may easily result in over voltage so this uh, in turn greatly reduces the hosting capacity of feed for uh, distributed generation this uh, boosting method will also uh, raise the voltage with the same amount uh, during uh, low load as uh, the low load as well as the load uh, in high to get sufficient uh, voltage rise uh, during this high load the risk of over voltage during uh, low load is another consequence that has to be considered another disadvantage is that in this method uh, uh, it is not an effective and it's only effective in uh, during normal operation of feeder but it is uh, not effective in uh, uh, severe uh, near the severe consequence arises the loads that are connected uh, uh, near uh, the beginning of the feeder could uh, become connected near to the end of the feeder during backup operation as a voltage boosting is not applied for those load a very low voltage magnitude could result in boosting the method so that dependent on our uh, loading uh, which is on higher loading the most of the uh, voltage rise will occur would not have uh, any advantage here such uh, two methods uh, we will describe here briefly one is series compensation and uh, uh, other one is switchable shunt compensation so whenever the series compensation is with our uh, frida the capacitor compensator are a part of all our uh, voltage drop due to uh, reactive load downstream of this capacitor so this capacitor compensate the part of all uh, voltage drop due to reactive load uh, in the downstream of our capacitor so the resulting voltage drop uh, is given by delta u is equals to rp minus uh, x minus xc here uh, xc is the reactance of the series capacitor the location of uh, series compensation should be carefully cho uh, chosen here the series ca capacitor uh, at the start of the feeder will not compensate all the reactive power uh, to the load but uh, it results in uh, high voltage uh, which Im immediately to a downstream capacitor compensation uh, towards the end of the feeder will have uh, less effect because uh, only reactive power downstream of the capacitor is compensated a distributed approach uh, with a number of series capacitor along with this feeder uh, which will give the best result from the voltage control point of view 
but uh, when the series capacitor is chosen uh, such that series reactance is fully compensated only a voltage drop due to active power uh, will be seen uh, this uh, of course uh, have only worst uh, the environment when the voltage drop due to reactive power is a sustainable part of our uh, total voltage drop or in other words uh, with a larger x by r ratio if we assume that x by r ratio is equals to 1 and uh, 0.9 uh, power factor for load so one third of the voltage drop can be compensated for uh, voltage drop that can be compensated uh, so we saw that uh, before uh, the maximum allowed voltage drop using uh, the normal method of voltage boosting uh, only 13 percent uh, we able to compensate there uh, third is by um, the voltage drop which is about 8.5 uh, placing all this uh, compensation at uh, uh, start uh, so start of feeder will result in the voltage boost uh, which is about uh, 4.5 uh, that to a maximum load using same uh, dead band as before uh, that is 102 to 104 percent uh, what we are using earlier would uh, give a maximum voltage about 108 percent so note that uh, uh, maximum voltage would occur at the start of the feeder uh, during maximum load the lowest voltage would still be reached during uh, maximum load at the end of the feeder so starting from uh, the low lower limit of the dead band uh, 1 or 2 percent and uh, 4.5 percent the boost uh, by series capacitor uh, that is 13 percent volt voltage drop would uh, results in 93.5 percent of minimum voltage uh, so these all values will be lies uh, below our uh, under voltage limit Shunt capacitance uh, results in constant uh, amount of voltage rise which is dependent on our load current which is given by uh, delta UC is equals to uh, XC uh, into QC where XC is the reactive power of the impedance between this uh, tap changes location and uh, the location of capacitor. So any change in the voltage over the source uh, reactance uh, at a main MV bus that is compensated for tap changes for uh, HV bar MV transformer. The voltage rise uh, delays linearly with the uh, distance of uh, capacitor location and uh, it remains constant after that also. For uh, shunt compensation, uh, the high voltage rise is uh, obtained for capacitor at the end of the feeder. So whenever uh, a voltage rise more than 3% uh, has to be achieved, so it is recommended to check for the harmonic resonance when uh, high levels of fifth harmonics are expected. The capacitor uh, should be a part of harmonic filters or uh, be combined with uh, detuning reactors. So uh, as we seen in our uh, last previous slide voltage rise is dependent on uh, the load current. So to prevent uh, the over voltage the capacitor banks can be disconnected when uh, the voltage exceeds certain level. Again this is a mechanical task, uh, some automation techniques has to be introduced here to do this work. A possible uh, control strategy would be uh, switching on the capacitor when the voltage drop below 95% and uh, to switch it off when the voltage exceeds 105%. So um, to do this we need some automation techniques. Uh, so. Uh, uh, and monitoring devices uh, with the help of this monitoring devices and automation techniques we can achieve uh, this compensation so this is about uh, a series and send compensation in today's session we have uh, uh, seen uh, that uh, individual uh, generator along with an voltage uh, of a medium uh, voltage feeders so uh, what are the terminologies that are involved in the distribution feeder design of distribution feeders basic design rules we have studied uh, and terminologies involved in the uh, design of distribution feeders and also we see the individual generator contribution along a medium voltage feeder and uh, the way with the help of the various equations and the graphs uh, uh, we have studied that so at last uh, we have studied the low voltage feeders uh, how the calculating the voltage profile of that uh, low voltage feeder after that uh, we have studied and also towards the end of session we have seen this series and uh, 
strength compensation so with this uh, i conclude this session